Hello everyone and welcome to Rogue Legacy, the first in my uh, my new weekly Sunday night roguelikes series. So, so every week, depending on how I'm feeling, on Sundays, no, not actually at night, but so all my videos go up at noon, Pacific Standard Time. But yes, uh, every week I'll do a, a different roguelike, just change it up every now and then. Just to something fun to do and to help kind of even out the, the schedule for the rest of the week. So, let's get started. Anyone who isn't familiar with Rogue Legacy, it's created by Celerdor Games, where you play as you know, a character, and then when they die, you play as the character's successor. Each character has its own unique set of traits. So each character has the same set of traits, like some of them are really big, some of them are really small, some of them can't. Some of them have like reverse controls or things like that, so it should be interesting. Let's see, that's the first boss in there. skeletons. Oh, don't touch me. Well, okay. We'll see how long I last with this. Oh, well, it instantly. So Sir Lee is now gone. So who shall replace him? Sir Taco the Knight with Alzheimer, so I, none of the rooms will have information on my map. Sir Kotaki the Barbarian, muscle weak and flexible. So I can't knock enemies back. I'm very flexible, which means I can change which direction I attack in the air, I believe. Lady Antoinette the Mage, gigantism. So. He's very, very tall. And I think hits harder, too. think I will be... Hmm. I'd be the Barbarian. So I can spend the gold that I got in the castle to... to start building up my estate. And these unlocks, you know, more mana, more health. As I do these things, more people will appear in that little starting area, and they will allow me to do other things. So, like, now there's a blacksmith here. Yes, yes. So, so I found two blueprints for Night Helm and the Blood Cape, which is really good. Well, it can be good. It's one of those risk versus reward things. So, better sword. Or 
a different sword, rather. It's a lighter sword. Oh no, that's right, it is better. Okay, sorry. A bit of a blind moment, I suppose. And Squire Helm. That's all the money I have for now. It's now my horribly mismatched outfit. Yes, and to get back in, you have to pay all of your money. So, you stop fresh essentially every time. Now all the rooms will be different and everything, because, well, this is a roguelike. Uh, you can actually, later, you can find someone to lock down the floor plan. Which is useful if you, like, know where a boss is and you just want to go to fight them. Ow. Ah. So really the thing you're mostly trying to do at the beginning is just pick up enough gold to unlock some things. Oh, that was close. Oh, ow. Oh, get away. His health is restored. Annoying. Light chest plate. Excellent. I want that box. Ah, well, managed to grab a little bit of money before I died. Alright, so this time I have Lady Lisa the Mage. Conducts electricity really well. I'm trying to remember what that does. I think that activates those temporary platforms just whenever I'm near them. Near side, that one's fairly self explanatory. Sir Horns be the Knight knows no pain, uh, so I can't see my health bar with that. And I can't be knocked back. Electrophobia uh, makes, instead of getting like chicken leg drops, there'll be live chickens that'll attack me. It's kind of crazy. Uh, hmm. I think this one. Lady Lisa. Don't have much money. I can get this one, at least. Alright, new castle. Yeah, okay. So these platforms would normally just be like little green balls and I have to do this downward attack to pop them out. But because I have that one trait, they just stay open all the time.
that got through the floor. chest take no damage so there's a special box in this room if i manage to get to it and open it ah well now it'll be locked i can't get to it oh well oh couldn't clear it so this is kind of just how this game goes you just keep going through until you <laughs> eventually get through the boss. Huh. No, I don't want to have any sightedness again, because that gave me a little bit of a headache. I don't recall what glaucoma actually looks like in the game. I think it just makes literally that just ew, sorry, it literally just makes everything dark. EHS is pretty good. Stereo blind is, is just silly because everything Everything looks like paper cutouts. Let's get a health increase. And that will make, instead of knights, now I'll have paladins. though, I think. We could do that. I think I'd rather spend the money out here. Yes, the architect can lock down the layout of the castle, so it won't change for one run, but you only get, I think, 90% of the gold that you would normally get. She allows me to use more spells, I think. Now there are more people. That's what it is, yeah. So I'll have... I can use these runes so I can get things like double jump and dashing. If I find other runes. So, get some of those later. And like I said, he allows me to lock down the layout of the castle for however much. Yeah, so you only get 60% of the gold that you would normally get if you do that. paintings. Yeah, there's the IBS. doing so well. Not that there's anything really special about that, it's just a stack of barrels you can break. 
Ow. Box 2000. Hooray, a cape. Oops, nope. Do not want to be there. That's the second area. I suppose I could do it. There's no real... There's nothing saying I can't. Just the area will be harder. after I beat the boss of the main castle area before I go on to that one. And once you beat the four bosses in the four areas of the castle, that door in that first room will open up. Ow. If I had, um... I forget what it's called, but if I had a, a tiny character I could walk through, because that wall C is a, it's a darker color like this one, those things you can pass through. Oh, I can go back to the entrance. Which means that this is probably, yep, that's the third area, I think. And the fourth area, I forget what it's called, Underworld or something like that. It's at the bottom of the castle. So the different areas are all in relatively the same spot, no matter the layout, no matter the specific layout of the castle. Yeah, this is a teleporter on the side of the forest. So. Let's go back to the front door. Yeah, so there's there's symbols are for one for each boss, one for giant eye, and one's for whatever the other bosses are. There's probably a, a hidden chest up in there. Or it might just be a, a straight path across, just so you can get up here. Squire chest plate. Having a fairly good run of it this time. Well, I don't have any way to dash, so there's no way I can get to that. Haha! -ha.
Phew. Oh, that's back in the forest. So, um, I'm not gonna bother with that. Basically, it starts to tell a story, and you find the journals periodically. It's a story about how... Um... The prince, and in order to try and get people to take him seriously to become the next heir, or something like that, he set out to conquer this castle, and I haven't seen the entire thing completed. I've seen up to a point. I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone who might be thinking about playing this and is interested in that kind of method of, you know, storytelling. Yeah, the Land of Darkness, that's the fourth area. Well, I think well, there's a secret down there that I can't get. Hmm. Well, let's give this boss another go. If we beat him, then tremendous. That'll be the best I've done on this boss ever. And if not, then it'll be a good place to stop. did really well that time. But I think we'll call it here for the day. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoy this new kind of casual-ish series. I'll see you all next time.